It is an old palace, high up in the Himalayas. It's only a few days' journey from Darjeeling, but Sister Laura told us it feels like the edge of the world, because the old palace looks up at such immensity. And now, it is to be known as the Convent of Saint Faith. The General is a good man, Sister Cloda. He has certainly been most generous to us, Reverend Mother. It's because he cares for the people who live on his estate. He believes in progress, and he wishes to do something for them. <sighs> there isn't a school or a hospital, and even the nearest doctor is miles away. The General wants us to provide these things. When Sister Laura visited there, did she discover any reason why the Brothers of St Peter abandoned their mission? Their order has a very high reputation for its teaching, and yet after five months... The brothers apparently felt their energies would be better employed in another place. All the same... Sister Cloda, it is God's will that the monks left, and it is God's will that it is we who now take up the general's generous offer. There is no point in idle speculation. Yes, Reverend Mother. Now, the general has an English agent, Mr. Dean... And it is Mr. Dean who will be able to help you in dealing with the local people and advise you on practical matters. Sister Laura's view was, however, that Mr. Dean is not a man of the highest moral character, and therefore... I hope I will be able to judge Mr. Dean's character for myself. Very well. But remember, you are very young to be made a Sister Superior in our order, Indeed, the youngest ever, and... And there is much that I don't understand. Forgive me, Mother. Now, I have given careful consideration to the nuns who will accompany you. Sister Philippa will, of course, be invaluable with her practical knowledge, particularly of gardening. Also, she is mature and... Older than I am, you mean? Sister Philippa is quite without envy. She has told me how much she admires you. I'm delighted she's coming with me, Mother. And also Sister Blanche. Who... Sister Honey, you mean? Come on. You can still use her nickname now you're a Sister Superior. The children will love Sister Honey. They'll come to her like flies at the honeypot. She's very good-natured and full of high spirits. Like everyone else, I'm very fond of her. But... I think you'll need Sister Honey. She's popular. And you'll need to be popular. Of course. But why Sister Ruth? Oh, she's clever and well-educated, but... She's a problem, I know. Of course, she hasn't been well. And I think in a cooler climate and with a smaller community, she'll be better, especially as she has to take responsibility. That's my chief reason for sending her. Give her responsibility, Sister. She badly wants importance. She certainly always wants to be important. Then your responsibility will be to give her responsibility. Mother... Yes? Are you sorry that I've been appointed to take charge at St Faith's? It was the Order's decision, not mine. But, yes, I don't think you're ready for it, and I think you'll be lonely. Why should I be lonely? It will be the same for me as for the others. If I thought that, I shouldn't worry so much. But what's good enough for us isn't quite good enough for you, is it? A community isn't a class of girls. The sisters won't be easy to manage, nor to impress. If you want advice, and I hope you do, don't despise your sisters. Remember, the superior of all is the servant of all. You think I'm being nasty, don't you? Of course not. But don't be afraid to say you want to come back. It's a relief to ride out of Darjeeling and up into the cool with guides and bearers beside us. The shade of the forest is greener and more pleasant than anything our eyes have seen for months. It reminds me of Ireland. Oh, how lucky we are to be going to such a beautiful place. It's only a ramshackle old house face in the Himalayas, Sister Honey. Well, it's our job to get it into shape. And with the Lord's help, we will manage it. Amen to that, Sister Philippa. All the same. I should like to know why the brothers of St. Peter went away so soon. Sister Ruth, you keep asking that question. That's because I'd like to know. And nobody will ever tell me. Apparently the school wasn't a success. Well, you have to admit it's strange. There is simply no point in speculating. I can't wait for tomorrow. The path finally leads out of the forest. The light dazzles our eyes. 
We see the hills rising across the gulf to the clouds. And then we see what we had missed at first, because we had not looked high enough. Across the north, the Himalayas stretch before us, and there, right ahead of us, Mount Kanchenjunga. The ponies shift, and we, these strange white women, sit staring at the snows. Then we start again on our journey. What's that? Where's it coming from? I don't know. Sounds strange. There's your answer ahead. He sits cross-legged and takes as little notice of us as if we were flies. His head does not move, nor do his eyes. In the teeth of the wind, he seems to have nothing on but his cloth robe. His arms and chest are bare, and his head is shaved. A holy man, a sannyasi. But he's just sitting there. He has a hut. Can't you see? There, behind him. And look, somebody's left him food. All the same. We feel curiously abashed and turn our horses on towards the palace. Welcome, ladies. I am Angu Aya, the caretaker. Welcome to the house of women. <laughs> what was that? Something about the house of women. This is not the first time the palace is filled with women, but very different ladies. Mr. Dean told me you wear long dresses and whales and a kind of bandage round your chin. <laughs> I know it's true. <laughs> you come to make a comment, is that the word? Yes. yes. <laughs> well, come, ladies, follow me. Come along, ladies, let's follow. <laughs> The old palace is hidden by the hill from the village. It is on a ledge cut like a lip from the face of the hill. It faces the snow-covered Himalayas. Sometimes they're like turrets of icing sugar, pretty and harmless. Some days they seem as if they might come crashing down. But however they look, there is always the wind. At Mopu Palace you live with the sound of the wind and a coldness always about your ears and ankles. There are not many flowers here, and the orchard and thicket are a tangle of weeds. And as for the vegetable garden, it's lost in the grass. We must attend to that first. Then we must clear the fruit trees, and then we will see about flowers. Of course. <laughs> the conservatory will serve very well as a dispensary, I think. I asked Sister Ruth to help me unpack, because people are arriving already. But she's upset. She must have a chill on her stomach. The villagers have made a mistake. Tell them, Aya, the dispensary is for people who are ill. They know that. But a lot of them are perfectly well. And even the ones who need help won't take it. There's a woman out there. She's got a bad cut, but she won't let me dress her hand. Of course she won't. She could do it herself, but she's been given two honours to have it done, and so she must. Oh, I don't understand. They've been paid to come here? Of course. The general wants the hospital to be a success. But, you see, the general is your friend. Dear <laughs> sister. I don't know what to do with these children. We have nothing on that. Too many of them. They smell. I thought you always knew everything. It's not fair to give me so many of them and nothing for them to do. Gently, sister. That's no way to speak to me. It certainly seems a very large class. You must start with a few of the older ones. The others can run away and play. They won't budge. They're being paid to come here, so they won't go away. What can I do with them? They look very stupid to me. Well... There's a blackboard over there. You could draw things on it in coloured chalk. They can tell you the name for it in their language, and then you can teach them the English. You can't call that a lesson. In the absence of any alternative, that's exactly what we're going to call it. But despite all the problems, in these first days, we are happy. We're filled with a kind of ecstasy. Oh! I think we have a visitor. Where? Over there, on the horse. A, a white man. Oh, it must be Mr. Dean, the general's agent. You have to pay his respects. Wait, Mr. Dean. Come, oh, sisters, please do not besiege him with questions. Oh, oh, I have my... important matters to discuss with him. Oh, talk with him about the general. Oh, 
The locals tell me you ride a horse like a man. I'm sorry to have missed that. Where did you learn? In Ireland, but it's not important. If you say so. Have the general's servants made you welcome? Yes. None of them I... speak English or Hindustani, of course. Except Olanga Waya. She won't help you much. We're learning their dialect. But there is one thing. Angu Aya insists on referring to the palace as the House of Women, and then she laughs. What does this mean? Are you sure you want to know? I wouldn't ask otherwise. The fact is that the General's father was a very different man from our current General. The father kept a large number of women here for... shall we say, for purposes of his own? I don't know exactly what went on here, but I have a shrewd idea it's not something I should describe to you, sister. I think the general, who is blameless in these matters, fears the house is a bad, wild life of its own. He looks to you to finally wipe out the taint of all that loose living. I see. Anguaya still longs for the old days. But maybe you will bring her around in time. I hope I've not upset you. I did ask. Oh, there's so much work to be done here. And the building is in a state of considerable disrepair. Just let me know what you need and I'll arrange it for you. And keep an eye on the men to make sure they do the job properly. There'll be no need for you to do that. You know how to handle the men, do you, sister? We are members of an Anglo-Catholic order who believe that so far as possible we should be self-sufficient in all aspects of our lives. Practical as well as spiritual. Now, as the General's representative, I should like you to show us the boundaries of the palace grounds so that we shall neither trespass nor be trespassed upon. Well, my opinion's not changed since the visit of Sister Laura. This is an impossible place for a nunnery. Uh, difficult, but not impossible, Mr. Dean. Nothing is impossible with God. Now, if your order was a contemplative order, you might learn a great deal from staring up at Mount Kanjeljunga. Our order is not like that. We are very busy people. Remember that here we are to open a hospital and dispensary and a school for children and girls. A school for girls is good. I find uneducated and simple people disarming. You will do me a great favour when you begin to educate the local ladies, sister. It has already been made clear to me, Mr. Dean, that you do not believe in solitude. Do you blame me? I'm not here to judge you. I like this place, and I like its people. Well, they have a lot to teach you. And, well, if you're determined, then I give you to the break of the next rains. That night, for the first time in many months, I dream of Con, and the way he looked the time we said goodbye forever. And I wake up, and suddenly I feel very alone. What if Mr. Dean is right? What if this is no place for a nunnery? There is so much for us all to do. We also have to become acclimatized to living in the high altitude of the Himalayas after months and years on the plain, while reminding ourselves that the building we occupy is now the convent of St. Faith's, and no longer the old palace at Mopu. Sister Ruth has a boil on her finger. Oh, nobody is ever iller than Sister Ruth. None of us is healthy. Pains, pimples, headaches, diarrhea. How can we do the work for which we came here? Oh, Sister Philippa, as always, you're right. We pride ourselves on being a practical order. We still haven't got the plumbing to work. Perhaps if you sent for Mr. Dean... I really would rather not. <laughs> but if you don't... Oh, no. No, you're right. We must not fail here as the brothers of St. Peter failed. I've paid the men, but we've been waiting three weeks for them to turn up. The people recommended to you are useless. Let me send the carpenter from the factory. He'll work the men for you and won't cheat you. And he'll fix your plumbing. 
And then we must look at your plans to build a workroom and a school. But not only that. You nuns seem never satisfied, Sister Honey. But the fact is, the room we're using as a chapel isn't very satisfactory either. And of course, there's a dispensary. You do realise, Mr Dean, that people are being paid to come to the dispensary and the children are paid to come to school. Of course. The general is a wise man. It's only until it becomes a habit. They're not really avaricious. It's the idea of getting a present. You can't order the people here. They don't know what an order is. Then they should learn. Why? Without discipline, we should all behave like children. Don't you like children? And that reminds me. May I tell you one thing about your dispensary, Sister Honey? Of course. If you get a bad case, a case that seems to you as if it might be dangerous or even serious, refuse to treat it. Refuse? But... If you had a case that went badly, or if one of your patients died, you'd have all the people up against you. They've never seen your kind of medicine before. They'll think it's a kind of magic. Remember, I warned you. Come in. Oh, oh sister. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Dean. I didn't know that... Well, Sister Ruth, what is it? They've brought in a woman. She was covered in blood. She must have cut a vein or an artery. It simply spurted blood. I had such a time stopping the bleeding. You should have come and fetched Sister Honey. You could have stopped it at once. Well, I was only trying to... Sister help. Honey, you'd better go. Of course. Well, I must leave you to your duties. Goodbye, Sister Ruth. I hope your patient does well. well thank you, Mr. Dean. I, I... What was the woman's name? Well, it sounded like Samuel. But it couldn't be that, could it? Samuel. She's a good old lady, one of my best tea pluckers. I'm very grateful to you, sister. It, 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 it was nothing. Oh, please. Never say that. <laughs> Goodbye, Sister Clodagh. Sister Ruth, I think you ought to know that Mr Dean has a very bad reputation. The way he behaves with the local women, you mean? Sister Ruth... I don't believe it's true, but even if it is... It won't make any difference to me. The holy man still sits cross-legged all day on what is clearly land belonging to the convent. The locals still gather to admire him. Sometimes I fancy his stillness is a reproach to our endless activity. But I know that's nonsense. What's happening? Well, it's uh, some sort of religious procession. But the Hindus and the Buddhists are walking together. Is someone dead? Anguaya has been drinking. She said something about having a lovely funeral feast. She says it's the general's elder nephew. His heir, the young general, Kundurai. He's been dead three days. How strange that nobody's bothered to tell us. Oh, there's a new heir now, Aya says. It was nothing until this morning. It wasn't even legitimate. Sister Philippa, please. It's what the Ayah told me. Now it's all changed. And what is the new young general's name? Dilip. Dilip Rai. The Ayah told me he was going to go to a school in England, but now he won't do anything of the kind. He'll be put into the army and married. We watch the procession going down through the tea plantation. The men becoming smaller and smaller until they are no bigger than ants. Sister Clover? Yes? I've brought something for you. <laughs> but her name is Hassanpool, but we call her Kunchi. Say salam to the Lemony Kunchi. Salam, Lemony. She's an orphan, and it's time she was married. But she's been behaving so badly that no one wants her. Isn't that right, Kunchi? <laughs> As you can see, she's very pretty. Every evening when I come home, I find her sitting on my veranda with flowers in her hair. She's becoming an absolute nuisance. If you keep her here and teach her a little sense, I'll try and make her uncle arrange her marriage. I don't think she should be here. I thought it was your business to save souls. <laughs> Mr Dean, you're not to speak to me like that. You're her only hope of a reputable future, you know. Very well. We'll try. I suppose for the present, she'd better go down into the lace school with the other girls. Say thank you, Lemony. Thank you, Lemony. I suppose ten rupees a month would do? There's no need. We're in doubt. No, you're doing me a favour by keeping her off my veranda. She can be very distracting. Mm. Yes. Very well. Can't she say thank you, Lemony? 
Thank you, Lemony. Off you go now and find Sister Honey. <laughs> Mr. Dean, there is another matter upon which I must consult you. That man, the Sunyasi or holy man, he's living on our ground. He was here first. Yes, but I should like you to ask the general to turn him off. He couldn't do that. It wouldn't be polite. <sighs> That's ridiculous. A dirty, ragged old man like that. I don't suppose the general knows he's here. On the contrary, he knows only too well. Besides, it would be a little difficult for the general to turn out his own uncle, wouldn't it? His uncle? Yes. He was once the Grand General Kundra Rai with all sorts of titles and orders. He's been decorated by four foreign governments and he was asked to London for the Jubilee. Queen Victoria's, I mean, not King George's. I've never heard him speak, but they say he talks several European languages. The people come for miles to see him. Uh, I wanted to ask you about that, too. Is there a right of way through our grounds? Not that I know of. So the people have no legal right? It's become a custom. What harm do they do you? They sit and stare. You'll make them feel very foolish if you suddenly tell them it's your land. I, I don't want to hurt their feelings, and of course I can't offend the general about the holy man, but at the same time, I don't know quite what to do. What do you think Christ would have done? Who taught him to speak like that? To catch me out with my own arguments? So, of course, the holy man remains. No sooner have I started in the garden than I have to stop. The bell for prayer seems to be ringing every five minutes. Sister Philippa, you're not saying that you regret spending time in prayer? No, of course not, sister, but... But I do love my work out here. I sent for some seed lists, and I have a collection of pots waiting. I thought maybe sweet peas with a border of petunias there. My book says the scents together are exquisite, and I should very much like to have some lilies, but the... Sister Philippa, we agreed. First the vegetable garden, then the fruit trees, and then flowers. I know, I know. But we can think ahead, too, can't we? Wonderful news, sister. Uh -huh. She's only been here a week, but she says she wishes to become a Christian. Who does? Can't she, of course. Do you believe her, sister, honey? She's such a sweet, trusting girl. How could you doubt her? I found a dictionary and grammar which the brothers left behind. I've been translating the catechism and some prayers and a few easy hymns to be used in the school. Can't she has been helping me? Is, is there anything the matter, sister? I was thinking what Mr. Dean would say. Oh, I'm sure he'd be delighted to. Oh, I think he'd say... <sighs> but no. He mustn't make me as cynical about human behaviour as he is himself. Of course, I'm delighted that Kanshi wishes to be a Christian. <laughs> but who's this? Good morning. I wish to see the superior sister. <laughs> I'm the Sister Superior. What can I do for you? I'm the young General, Dilip Rai. I need to speak to you. Oh, then you'd better tie up your pony and come with me. I have heard about you, that you are all very clever. I want to study mathematics and history and poetry and languages here. Have you a sister to teach these things? I have a note from my uncle to you to ask you to encourage me. I'm very sorry. We only teach children and young girls. Why? A convent doesn't take men pupils. That's not very polite to men. It's the custom. But Jesus Christ was a man. He took the shape of a man. How old are you? I am 17. Please, help me. I was to go to the University of Cambridge. Now that my brother is dead, my uncle says that I mustn't go. I thought if I studied and learned quickly, he might change his mind and think me so clever that it would be a pity not to send me after all. But you have to understand... And there is something else. I have to marry and have a baby son. It is our custom that my uncle should choose my wife. But I am modern. I want to choose my wife myself. I should like to marry a girl who you have taught, and then, if you teach me too, we should enjoy our culture together in our own home. Before I came to you, I wrote out my timetable. You will see that I have decided to study every subject every day and not to spare myself. In that way, I shall get on. <clears throat> 5 a.m. to 7 a.m., Algebra and Geometry and Arithmetic with the Mathematical Sister. 
8 a.m. to 10 a.m. studying religions, especially Christianity, with the scriptural sister. 10 a.m., art. 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., French and German with the French and German sisters, if any. 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., physics with the physical sister. Do you think my ideas are any good? Uh, of course, I'll give you carte blanche and all that to alter it in any way, if you so think. I, I will need to consult with the other sisters. In a day or two, when we've talked it over, I'll send you a note to let you know our decision. But I want you to tell me now. My uncle goes away today, and I have to tell him before he leaves. I can start straight away. I've bought my pony's feed, and I've eaten before I came, so I can stay a nice long time. I will see what can be done. He seems a very polite young man. He stood up as I passed through the reception room, and I thought that encouraging in native royalty. He's a very beautiful young man. And his clothes are beautiful, too. Sister Ruth, that is not a good reason, one way or the other. But it's true, isn't it? Of course, in the end, Sister Cloder, the decision is yours. Mm, I know. But it's a decision that affects us all. First we've accepted Kunshi at Mr Dean's request, and now here is the young general. What is it you fear, sister? I don't know. He is charming and polite and sincere, but he is a man and... <sighs> so you think he'll be some sort of cuckoo in the nest? Put like that, it sounds absurd. We owe the general a great deal. And rejecting his nephew in this way smacks of ingratitude. Mm. We will allow the young general to come and study oh, here. Good. Did you notice his perfume? It was so strong. He couldn't miss it while he was sitting there waiting. I had to ask him what it was. He says it comes from the Army and Navy stores in London. And do you know its name? Black Narcissus. Harmonium has arrived in time for Christmas. The ponies brought it, two harnessed together under its weight. Sister Honey has spent hours making a crib for the children. All day the people come softly in and out. The tide of love and liking seems to lap the convent. When we finish supper, we can start hanging up the holly boughs. <laughs> All the way from England. <laughs> Oh. You know, it's so kind of Mr. Dean to give us these beautiful Tibetan boots. They're so warm and soft. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I wish we could do something for Mr. Dean after all he's done for us. Couldn't we invite him to the carol service, Sister Cloda? No, that wouldn't do at all. Uh, Sister Ruth, Sister Honey, was speaking to me. Well, Mr. Dean can certainly come to the carol singing if he likes. The service is open to everyone who cares to come. The chapel is festive. I read the Christmas prayers and psalms, then the carols. The young general and Mr. Dean arrive during the service. The young general is quiet, but Mr. Dean is clearly drunk. Happy Christmas to one and all! Sister, I went down to ask Mr. Dean what the music was, and he brought me to see. May I congratulate you on the birth of Christ? Oh, thank you. I I'm very much interested in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Have I said anything wrong? No, but we don't normally speak of him so casually. Then you should... Mr. Dean, I believe you are drunk. I believe so, too. Happy Christmas. How dare you come to our service tonight like this? Publicans and sinners, sister. Oh, you're objectionable when you're sober and abominable when you're drunk. I quite agree. Good night. Come, General. I sing of a maiden that is matchless. Mr. Dean, did someone give you that holly buttonhole? Would you like it? Who gave it to you? That would be betraying a confidence. Good night, sister. <laughs> I sing of a maiden that is matchless. I sing of... 
You asked to see me. Come in and sit down. Sister Ruth, I've been worried about you for some time. I feel that things are not right. In what way? You look so ill. You've got terribly thin. And... I'm perfectly well. I'm stronger than I've ever been, and you know it. But you're trying to make out that. I'm sorry, sister. I didn't mean to be rude, and I... I'm perfectly well. I haven't been sleeping. That's all. Is something worrying you? Don't you think you could tell me about it? I can't speak of it to anyone. Well, won't you try? You know you can trust me. How can I? You didn't want me to come here. You'd use anything I told you to get rid of me. I only want you to feel that you are well and content. How can I be content? You don't want me. Don't pretend you do. Don't you think you're letting things run away with you? I think you've let yourself fall into thinking too much of Mr. Dean. <gasps> Please answer me carefully. Why did you give that holly buttonhole to Mr. Dean on Christmas night? I didn't. I think you did. I didn't. I haven't given him anything. Oh, sister, don't you realise what you're doing? What you're running the risk of losing in yourself? Well, I've noticed that you're always very pleased to see him. Oh, sister Ruth. You're trying to tell me that I'm not fit to be a nun. Well, no more are you. And you know it for all your honours and success. Wonderful Sister Clodagh, clever Sister Clodagh, and all the time, you're worse than I am. And that's why you're trying to bully me. What have I said? If that was in your mind, it's better out. <laughs> oh, Sister, forgive me, please forgive me. I don't know what to make of you. I can't decide now. But there is something very wrong here. Not because of what you've said of me, but because of your state of mind. If there's any way in which you feel you could be helped, will you come and tell me? In spite of his kindliness, Mr. Dean isn't a good man. You must take him for what he is and not try to glorify him into someone he isn't. When he speaks to you, he has a way of making you think he's interested in you. But that's only a manner. He doesn't mean it. And when he came to chapel last night, he was drunk. May I go now, please? Yes. But just one more thing. Please stop calling the young general Black Narcissus. That's the perfume he wears, and it suits him. He's so vain. Look, please, stop it. Is there anything that I'm allowed to do? It's difficult to explain. But none of us are as single-hearted as we were when we arrived. We're changing. Even Sister Philippa. My rock. My anchor. I want to turn the present vegetable terraces over to flowers and make the vegetable garden down below the stables where it can't be seen. That's why I've made the list of extra seeds we need. And then there's the herb garden I'm planning to put round the chapel. Only simple herbs, lavender, sage, mint and rosemary. Sister, all this will take months. Oh, Mr. Dean has promised to get me help. But think of the cost. The seeds alone are beyond any allowance we can possibly expect, and half the things on this list couldn't grow here anyway. I think they could. It's very unlikely. I should like to try. I don't know what's come over you, sister. You bring me these schemes which would cost hundreds of rupees in labour and plants, and you know perfectly well there is no hope at all of any of them being sanctioned by the order. Because of this garden, you've been neglecting your other work. Your clothes are untidy, and lately you've been unpunctual at prayers. That's all true, isn't it? Yes, sister. Why? I'm out here, and Mount Kanchenjunga is there, and it... It interrupts. Please, go and think it all over. Pray. 
I've agreed we should teach the young general because of what we owe his uncle. Kunchi is with us because Mr. Dean has asked us to take her in. They're both young and beautiful, both willing, both polite. But have I let in more than I know? Laudate et benedicite, mio signore et regraciate et serute. Why have you stopped? We have a visitor. Where? Oh! <laughs> I didn't see you, can't you? When did you creep in? Only now. Forgive me, sister. You know the young general is having his lesson. I like to listen. You shouldn't be here. Why? Because the prince must concentrate upon his work. I will be silent and a watch. No country go to the lace school. Sister, oh. I don't mind if she stays. Perhaps she will inspire me. <sighs> listen how confidently I will read it now. Laudate et benedicite. Mio signore et regraciate et servite a lui cum grande humilitate. <laughs> he is a prince. She is only a village girl. The gap between them is huge, but he is all too well aware of her admiring looks. But we have become occupied with excitements of our own. This is wonderful news, sister. <laughs> Isn't it? So what exactly does the Reverend Mother say? Here. Oh. From your report, we think the time has come when you may safely embark on the building of the chapel. <laughs> you seem to have been very successful in the organising of St. Faith's. Oh, I don't feel that last part to be true at all. But the chapel plans are enclosed, so finally we may proceed. <gasps> so, what now? We'll need practical advice. Indeed. So I've had to send the plans to Mr. Dean. If I'm correct, this chapel is meant as far as possible to be a replica of your mother chapel back in England. A nice enclosed rectangular building with a pointed roof, a cross and a bell. The walls inside have a dado of tiles and a dais for the altar. Oh, and above that there's a representation of the flight into Egypt with a ruby-coloured Joseph, a blue virgin and a lovely khaki-coloured donkey. The stalls and the carpet and the tiles are being sent out from England. As they no doubt are to every single chapel of your order in the entire globe. Mr. Dean, this means a great deal to us. Do you actually like this chapel? Of course we like it. Even looking at it makes me homesick for our dear mother house. The chapel there is much bigger, of course, and we can't expect anything very grand here. Sister Cloda knows I don't mean that. I suppose it's not a very beautiful design. Who's but... talking about beauty? It's the whole idea that's wrong. I haven't many principles, but I don't want to help build a thing like this. Mr. Dean! I've been thinking about it a lot, so please, look at what I've done. This is the chapel you should let me build for you here. But that isn't a chapel at all. It's, it's more like a, a temple. Of course it is. This is the East. You're dealing with an Eastern people. Christ himself was an Eastern Jew. And it should be built where the path comes out from the forest onto the hill, just above the holy man's shrine. We can't be near here. Of course you can. He's taken very nearly the best place, but not quite the best. Above him is the highest place of all, the best for seeing the snows. And we'll make the chapel so the path comes right through it, and the people are coming and going through it all day long. People coming and going through it all day long? What an extraordinary idea. Yes, built there, it'll be above everything. The valley, the clouds, the trees, and it will be open. You see, these are not exactly walls and not exactly pillars. They're there to act as a windbreak and give shelter without shutting the chapel off. On the floor, you can put straw. Yes, I, th I think that's best. It's good to kneel on and at the same time clean the people's feet and encourage them to rest there. And here's your altar in the shelter of this pillar. Of course, it won't be a chapel as you know it, but you can console yourself with thinking that it's a chapel not only for you, but for all life. All life, which is God. Oh, Mr. Dean, you're right. That's just what we need. Sister Ruth, why are you here? I brought some letters. But then I don't suppose you'll follow up Mr. Dean's idea. You're going to pass up the chance of making something beautiful and fitting because you didn't think of it yourself. Sister Ruth, we didn't ask for your advice. I'm as much part of the order as you are. 
is as much my chapel as yours, and I think it should be built. Sister, control yourself. Remember where you are and who you're talking I'll to. I'll fight you with every breath in my body. Sister, go. Sister, honey, perhaps you would take her out. I'll write to Reverend Mother. I'll I'm tell her what sister. you're doing. You, you can't fine. do this to me. You... I must apologise, Mr. Dean. Taking charity as love, Sister Clodagh, you speak in a very uncharitable way. But in any case, I can see you don't like my idea. I do like it, but it isn't a chapel. <sighs> you and all your sacred mystery. A chapel shouldn't be sacred, but as free and useful as the path I put it on. Forgive me, but I've read enough of the Bible to know what Christ would have thought of your dados and your closed doors. Please. That's enough. No, it's all right. I'll build you any sort of chapel that seems to you best. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, Sister. Sister Philippa, what's the matter? I don't think I should stay here. I want to be transferred. But why? I rely on you. No, you, you were right. I realise now this place is too powerful. It has defeated me. There's nothing wrong, Sister Clodagh. It's just that I want you to write and ask for my transfer at once. Please! You were right to warn me. I'd forgotten. Forgotten what, Sister Philippa? What I am! I've been putting my work before my religious life. I've become too wrapped up in thinking about this garden and what I want to grow here. But surely now you've realised the danger. You can stay. I daren't. I've become obsessed. I think more often about the wonder of Mount Kanchenjunga up there than I do about my faith. There's something powerful here. I can't trust myself anymore. Uh, I think I understand. There are only two ways to live in this place. You must either live like Mr. Dean or like the holy man. You must either ignore it completely or give yourself up to it. Neither would do for us. No. That's why I think we shouldn't be here. Well, we are here. And I don't think it will help if we run away. You know, if I ask you to be transferred, it will be a bad mark against you. That's all the better. That's what I need. I write to the Reverend Mother, and Sister Philippa leaves soon after. We are promised another sister to take her place, but in the meantime, we have to carry on as best we can. One day, I climb the hill to see the holy man. I stand there, very close to him, but he just sits, staring out across the gulf. I wonder how he can bear to sit and look into the wind. And I wonder if Sister Philippa is right about the power of this place. Are you going to tell me what's worrying you? <laughs> Ever since we came here, whenever we've had problems, it's always been ask, Mr. Dean. Well, that's because there's nobody else to ask. I had to teach the young general, didn't I? And I couldn't turn out the holy man, and... Oh, everything I've done has been forced on me, hasn't it? What are you talking about? Sister Philip has brought it home to me. I don't know how much it's true, and how much it's my imagination. Do you notice a change in us since we came here? In what way? We're less single-hearted. As this palace. The palace which used to be a house of women. Made us different people. Tell me truthfully. And I have to ask you. Has Sister Ruth ever tried to speak to you alone? I keep out of her way. She's changed, I can see. And Sister Honey. She's becoming obsessed with the babies in the dispensary and... Me. Am I very different? Yes, you're much nicer. How? You're much more human. Is that it? 
When I was a girl, I loved a man. We were children together in Ireland in a little place called Linnis Kelly. Everyone thought we should marry. But he was ambitious. And I found out he was going to America to his uncle and... He didn't mean to take me. He didn't think he was doing anything wrong. I don't think he ever thought of marrying me. But in a little place like that... Everyone knew and they were waiting for the engagement. So I had to get away first. It was a strange way of bringing me in, but God works in strange ways. So I've heard. But why talk of it now? I thought I'd forgotten all about it. Until I came here. I think you should go away at once. Run away like Sister Philippa? Yes, if you've any sense. And abandon all this work like the brothers did? I told you when we first met. This is no place for a nunnery. <sighs> you should all go before anything happens. I didn't think you'd advise us to give in. I don't know why I told you about myself, but I'm glad I did. When it's out, it's nothing at all, is it? I still only give you to the rains break. As I'm planning to go to England, I am of the opinion it would be polite of me if I wore European clothes. I have acquired a catalogue. I'm very taken with this gentleman-like suit. Double-breasted, pinstriped, in a choice of colours. It looks nice in the illustrations. But is it the thing? I want to be as fashionable as possible. And I must have some underclothes. Here are some photographs oh. and you see it says Viella is best for underwear. What is Viella, sister? Really, General Rye, you must ask someone else. Well, and is Viella not a proper subject? Oh, I'm so sorry. But who is to help me if you won't? Already I've ordered a box of shirts and ties and socks and pyjamas to be sent here to you on approval so that you and the other sisters could help me choose them. You ordered them to be sent to us? Yes, I thought we would have such fun choosing them and then... Really, General, I don't know how I can go on having you here. Why are you so angry? I, I try to behave exactly as you want me to. I send Kanchi away from the schoolroom because the sisters do not think it's right. She should stare at me and admire my beauty. I try to memorize everything you say. Don't you like me to come? You mustn't talk so much. Please go. I'll make up your lesson tomorrow. Very well. Thank you for helping me and excuse me for anything I may have done wrong. Goodbye, Sister Claude. I thought he would come back the next day. But he didn't. And Kanshi too is missing. She must have run away. It's a week since she was here. So much for her saying she wants to be a Christian. I think she's staying away because she stole that little vase from the chapel. But we didn't say anything about it because you said not to. I told Anguaya she must know that we know she did it. But isn't it odd that from the very same day, Black Narcissus... Uh, I mean, the young general... He hasn't come for his lessons. For all his faults, he's not the kind of boy who'd do anything deceitful. Well, I still think it was asking for trouble to have him and that little minx here together. Sister Ruth, that is enough. Oh, it's always enough whenever I try to express an opinion. Anyway, country isn't half the minx she was when she first came. She was getting to be quite clean and useful. Oh, I wish I'd talked to her about the vase myself instead of telling Aya. If you ask me, the Aya knows what's going on. Perhaps I know, perhaps I don't. But Aya, we're responsible for her. You know something. Tell us. She's a thief. You know she stole a brass vase from the church room? Well, of course I discovered it at once. When Kanchi cries, you always let her off. But I thought, this is my affair. She can cry all she likes. So I whipped her without asking. Oh. Once for stealing and twice for the silly way she did it. Aya, you shouldn't have done that. But then the young general comes in and sees me whipping her. I have lived in this place when it was a house of women. And I know those looks from men. So I tell him, isn't it time to put your books away, Diliparaja, and be a man? Oh, this is strange, so very strange. Sister, please. I want you to tell us everything, Aya. I see he is uncertain. So I said that I have to take the sister Sahib her tea. And I put the rope in his hand and tell him, here. You finish the beating. 
Go on. I left. But I think I know what happened. She lies there sobbing, making big eyes at him. She is nothing a village girl. But he throws away the rope and takes her into the stables and does what a man does. You see, I know about these things. And you don't. You should have told us before. What difference would it make? <sighs> oh, yes. Outside there is a woman waiting. She has a baby and the baby is sick. Then I must go immediately. <laughs> How long has he been like this? The mother says three or four days, but today she couldn't wake him. Has he vomited lately? He often vomits a little. Yesterday and today he wouldn't take any food. She probably gives him too much. I expect that's what's wrong. He's been a little out of sorts for a long time. I thought it was teeth. Sister Honey, are you sure? She says she wants you to give him something to wake him. He's been asleep so long. Yes, I understand. Sister, but... remember Mr. Dean's warning. Is this serious? Yes. No, I, I can't be sure. Then let him sleep. Let the mother take him home and put him to bed. If he dies, we will be blamed. Look at him. He may well die. I, 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 I can't let that happen. The mother says there must be something you can do. Sister, be careful. But think, this little baby, this darling, we have to help him. The best thing you can do is make the mother go home where she can be with her own people. Lemony, the mother will not be content with that. She wants you to give her something, anything. Sister Honey, you know what I think. We must do nothing. Why is Mr. Dean always right in your eyes, sister? That is quite enough. My views are clear. The mother begs you, Lemony. We shouldn't even try to save life, you mean? Of course, it's up to you. You run the dispensary. Should I have stayed? On the one hand was life itself. On the other, the survival of the convent of St. Faith's. But I think maybe Mr. Dean is wrong. And maybe the baby will live. The children are very late for school this morning. Perhaps they think it's a holiday. But there's no one in the dispensary either. Lemony, no one's likely to come. Why? What do you mean? That baby the woman brought died in the night. It oh. began to twitch and twitch, oh. worse and worse, and then it seemed to die. Oh. Only it was breathing, and then it did die. And they are saying all over the village that the smiling Lemony killed him. No, no, that's not true. But they say you gave her medicine and a spoon. Oh, did you, Sister Honey? We are here to save lives. I couldn't let the baby die. It was probably meningitis. I, I had to do something. I know you didn't kill the baby. Sister, is that the best you can say? Oh, I'm sorry. I have to think about the future of St. Faith's, not just about... can you hear yourself? We know where this will end, where it always ends. Whatever do you mean? You send for Mr. Dean. Mr. Dean, with those thick chestnut hairs all the way down his arms to his fingers. Sister, stop. But you'll send for him, won't you? I tried to warn you. But the villagers will come back. I was only trying to help. Let me tell you something. The general's agent before me was riding his pony down to the tea factory one day and he let it kick an umbrella which was open on the path over the edge. There was a baby asleep under it and it was killed. No. It was an accident but they murdered him that night. But they're capable of that, Mr. Dean. I'm trying to make you see that this is serious. I'll do my best to talk to everybody and explain what really happened. And the young general and Kunchi? What about them? Oh, Mr. Dean, you know why neither of them wants to come back here to be with us. It means uh, nothing. He is the young general. She is a village girl. If she is lucky, he will make arrangements. Miss, you did. I try to spare you things. Do you think they'll come back? The villagers, you mean? That worries me more. That is our mission. They may, in time. We'll look really silly if they don't, won't we? With a dispensary and a clinic and a school with nobody in it. Of course they'll come back. Do you know where this started, Mr. Dean? Well, of course, in one way, with the whip. But do you know what Sister Honey gave this baby? The baby they think she's killed. Sister Ruth, stop, please. Aren't you glad it wasn't this you had to drink, Mr. Dean? This is castor oil. That's all. Isn't that absurd? Sister Honey wanted to help, and she gave them something which couldn't do much harm, and now they believe she killed the baby. It's funny, isn't it? Sister Ruth, Mr. Dean will begin to think this is an asylum, not a convent. Mr. Dean may think what he likes. I should leave. Oh, Mr. Dean, darling, Mr. Dean, please don't go. Please, please. I no longer know anything, except that we must pray. Two 
days pass and no one comes. No young general, no kanshi, no school children, no sick or injured. Every day we prepare. And every day no one comes. Really, for all the good we're doing, we might as well be the holy man on the hill. Are you sure he does no good, Sister Ruth? What do you mean? Think about it. We will have extra time for meditation tonight after Evensong. I think we all need it. Oh, sister, honey. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't bear this anymore. I know you think it's my fault, but I couldn't let that baby die without trying to help him. Oh, how was I to know that we would be blamed? I can't bear it. Oh, sister, honey, please. I've had enough of this. I can't stand anymore. Sister? What's she crying for, I'd like to know? Well, I'll tell you. She wants to have a baby of her own. She won't say it, but that's what all these tears are about. She's afraid to say it. Sister, leave her alone. And you're afraid too, aren't you? You're more afraid than anyone. You're afraid we'll know why you're always having consultations alone with him. What are you talking about? Mr. Dean, of course. And I'll tell you something else. It isn't you he likes, it's me. Oh, you're very clever, but I'm not afraid of you. Not if you starve me and poison me and shut me up. I'm still not afraid. He'll help me, you see. I'll tell him what you do, and he'll be very angry. She's mad. Don't move. Sit still. Carry on eating. I know you're watching me. But I'm not afraid. I am stronger than any of you. Do you understand me? What do we do? For the moment, leave her. And let us pray that she comes to her senses. Excuse me, Lemony, it's quarter past six. No one has rung the Angelus. Where's well, Sister Ruth? It's her duty. Where is she? Well, I came to tell you that too, Lemony. She's gone out. Gone out? I hear you know the state she's in. Why didn't you stop her? Oh, you should never stop mad people from doing what they want. You should never interfere with them at all. But she might hurt herself. Oh, if she's really mad, that won't matter. And if she's not really mad, she'll look after herself. You know I asked you to keep an eye on her. When did you last see her? About three o'clock. Then she could have been gone over three hours, and she's never left the convent grounds before. I tell none of the other servants about this. Of course, Lemony. Where do you think she's gone? I've no idea. Mm, I think you have. <laughs> Mr. Dean! Oh, oh, Mr. Dean! Sister Ruth, what are you doing down here? I came to find you. Then you must think again. No, please, don't go away. Now stay with me just for a moment. What is this about? I can't stand it any longer. I came on purpose to find you. I love you. I want to be with you always. Hold my hand. Please. Sister. Please. Sister, you can't behave in, in this shocking way. It isn't shocking. It couldn't be. Have you forgotten who you are? What makes you think a nun can't love? I, you can't. Love me, it's ridiculous. I've loved you ever since I came here. Ever since I first saw you. You can't. You're imagining it. I wouldn't want to live if I went away from here. And of course they will send me away after this. You mustn't let them get me. Don't tell them where I am. Please. I'm sorry, you must let me take you back. I can never go back. Never. Of course you can, you silly child. No one will know. I'll say I found you wandering on the path. I'm not going back. I can't stand it any longer. And you know who the worst is? The superior sister. At night I can't sleep because she comes and stands by my bed. So do you know what I do? I go and stand by hers. Right over her while she's asleep. To see if she's afraid like I am. You do understand, don't you? Of course I do. <laughs> now listen. You go back and I'll come up with you and explain everything to Sister Clover. Oh, no. You don't understand me. You think I'm crazy. Do I can see it in your eyes? Sister, please. 
Let me take you back. No. I'll help you explain. No, leave me alone. Sister, stop. No, no, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Would it have been different if we'd known earlier that she'd gone? Did I leave it too long before I sent Sister Honey down to talk to Mr. Dean? Who knows? Meantime, I ring the bell for Vespers myself, since there is no one else to do it. As I wait in the dusk, I feel I know less and less about why we're here and what we can achieve. Sister, I... I think he was drunk. But what did he say? He was sitting on his veranda. He had whiskey. There was a horrible smell of it and he looked funny. I think he was upset about something, but he, he wouldn't say. Was she there? No, she wasn't. And he wouldn't tell me if he'd seen her. He... He asked me to have a drink. What did you do? I told him we were searching for her, and he tipped his chair back and said, Don't mind me, search away. And did you? I thought I'd better. I told him I thought it was my duty, and he laughed. Then I said that if he were a gentleman, he'd help me look for her, and... I, I can't tell you what he said then. Oh. You need to eat and then rest. Mm. After Compline, we'll organise a search... Not till after Compline. Sister, suppose she's down by the river. There might be leopards down there. I doubt it. But we have to get men and lights, and you must rest. You and Aya will keep watch here. I'll go with the men. If she comes back, ring the bell very softly. Let's try and keep the knowledge of this to as few people as possible. I feel so very tired. Mm. And I'm afraid. I stand there while the men go down to the banks of the river casting the light of their torches over the water. My heart turns to ice, but we find nothing. At two o'clock, the men suggest we stop. They say we should wait for the light. So I return to the convent. In four hours, it'll be daylight. You should go to bed. I'll keep watch. Are you sure you don't want me to stay instead of you? I mean, I mean, she might come to me more easily than to you. You need the rest. Oh, it's so terrible that there's nothing we can do. From two to four, the hours fade slowly. I stay in the chapel and try to pray. And then, towards four o'clock, the light starts to appear. It spreads, and the Himalayas are before me, coloured in ash and orange and precious pink. And then, it is day. And still, she isn't here. It's nearly six o'clock. Oh, thank you, Aya. You've been up all night, Lemony. I know. It's time for me to ring the Angelus. Oh, you feel strong enough, Lemony? If not me, then who will do it? I keep thinking someone is watching me, waiting for me. But there is no one. The morning light is blinding after the dark of the chapel. Fear comes over me. Fear of the night and the vigil and the sense that I am not alone. I walk towards the bell and grasp the rope. Whisper, whisper, whisper. But don't believe I haven't heard. You want him too, don't you? Sister, please. But you're not going to have him. Stop, sister, please. We struggle. We go towards the edge of the belfry, swaying above the gulf below. Then, Sister Ruth slips on the stone. I try to catch at her habit to help her. She seems to fall into the sky with a scream. I force myself to look down. She has fallen where they have been cutting the bamboos. Her hand and veil are flung out curiously sideways. A spike has driven through her chest, holding her up with her head hanging down. I'm glad she's buried, but the people are afraid. They say she is a ghost, she has gone into the tree that she fell on, and no one will pass under it. I will write to the Reverend Mother. I write to her as a child, with none of the little bits left out. 
Everything is in it, everything, all we have ever thought and said and done. I wait for her reply in dread. Sister, what has she said? She... It's so unexpected. What, what does she say? She says... <clears throat> This is the first letter I've ever had from you that pleased me, in spite of the terrible news it brought. In it, I seem to find a new Clodagh, one whom I have long prayed to meet. Oh, sister. Oh, I'm so <laughs> pleased. Oh, so uh, what must we do now? We must begin to pack. At once? There's nothing to keep us here. Do I want you to go? Yes and no. I thought you'd be glad. Oh, I am. I thought you'd go, and quickly too. This is the house of women. Not women like you, but women who could entertain a prince and make him happy. And now you're going. I'm sorry. But I'll soon get over it. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Forgive me, but go before the rain comes. I don't understand. The rain is late, but it will come. You don't want to travel in the first break of rain. So what will happen to Kanchi? The young general won't marry her, but she'll end up as a well-respected concubine. Is that a good outcome? For Kanchi, it's about as good as she can hope for. The young general is generous. But what about you? Oh, I'll be sent to another convent with less responsibility. I'll be superseded as sister in charge. Will you be able to stomach that? It's what I need. I'm sorry that you're leaving. I didn't expect you to say that. I didn't expect to say it. You drink too much. You have to have a certain toughness to stay here. Which we don't have. You have toughness. But not to live with Mount Kanchenjunga looming above you. You need to be able to stare into the wind like the holy man does. Your way of thinking is very different, and so it drove you all mad. Certainly Sister Ruth. She would have been mad anywhere. I shouldn't have let her run off. I should have insisted on bringing her back here. Please. Just take care of her grave. You know I will. I shall miss you. You told me we would only last until the rains came, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. You want to prove me wrong? Seems that the rains have started. So go. Leave me alone. You're right. It's time to go. The battle's lost. <laughs>